Hello, this is Dr. Evan Osar, developer of the Integrated Movement System and author of the Corrective Exercise Solution to Common Hip and Shoulder Dysfunction. Thank you so much for tuning in and welcome to this video on Corrective Exercise Solutions to Improve Common Hip and Shoulder Dysfunction. Hip and Shoulder dis Dysfunction is rampant in our industry and can often delay or even derail your clients from achieving their health and fitness goals. In this video, I would like to share with you how the principles of corrective exercise respiration, centration, and integration can help you become the specialist in corrective exercise that your clients need and want. We covered respiration and trunk stabilization in the last video, so this video will cover the specific patterns needed to improve the most common hip dysfunction, mainly poor femoral stability within the acetabulum, as well as the most common shoulder dysfunction, the downward rotated and anterior tilted scapula. I will cover two of the most effective corrective corrective exercise patterns for each region, and then demonstrate one extremely effective pattern for integration of the hip and shoulder with the trunk. Follow the principles, use the corrective exercise patterns, and you can establish yourself as the go-to corrective exercise specialist. Let's go to the exercises. The fundamental bridge pattern is one of the most effective patterns for improving the gluteal function and centrating the hip. The client will set up in the bridge position, feet parallel, knees parallel, and he'll activate his core. He'll lift up, utilizing the gluteal complex and the hamstrings. Lift up until the pelvis is parallel and in line with the knees and the shoulder. He will not drive into hip hyperextension as this will create decentration of the hip. Again, basically this pattern is a hip hinge on the table. There should be no change in alignment of the thoracopelvic canister. When it's performed dysfunctionally, you'll see hyperextension of the thoracolumbar junction, as you can see as he lifts up into thoracolumbar hyperextension, and you'll also see decentration of the hip in the acetabulum. And here I'm palpating the femoral head anterior within the acetabulum. The functional marching bridge pattern is a great pattern for establishing the unilateral stabilization function of the gluteal complex. Starting a bridge pattern, the client will keep his core activated. He'll alternate lifting one leg at a time. The goal during this pattern is key. The goal is to lift one leg with no change in pelvic alignment. To be able to lift one leg with no change in thoracopelvic alignment and to be able to lift that leg with no change in centration of the hip or the femoral head within the acetabulum. Again, oftentimes you'll have to palpate for this to make sure the client does not lose control throughout the pattern. This client demonstrates great control during the marching bridge. The sideline isometric pattern is a great pattern to develop stability of the thorax on top of the scapula and scapula on the thorax. The client lies with his head supported on the side and his shoulder and elbow are flexed to 90 degrees. He pushes his arm down into the table and lifts his thorax up over top of his arm. He should get long if he's performing this pattern properly. Again, it's a great pattern for scapular thoracic stability as well as stability within the glenohumeral joint by activating the external rotators. You can cue this pattern by pushing up and in on the scapula as a client pulls down and around with the scapular stabilizers. Prone thoracic lengthening is a great pattern to develop scapular thoracic stabilization, especially in closed chain function. The client will put his arms about shoulder height, palms flat down on the table. He'll activate his core and his deep neck flexors to stay long to his spine. He'll pull himself forward on the table, which is, which is what gives him that lift. So he's not just pushing up with his arms, he's actually pulling forward as if he's crawling or creeping along the table. He lifts and pulls himself long and which activates the scapular stabilizers to draw the scapula down and around the rib cage. You can cue this pattern by pushing up and in on the scapula as a client performs this pattern. The integrative sideline pattern is a great way to integrate hip and shoulder stability. The client lies on the side, lines up his elbow and his downside hip. His forearm is flat on the table. He activates his core and lifts up onto his forearm and downside knee. 
this integrates the function of the entire lateral chain, making this a super effective pattern for developing unilateral stability. He lowers himself back down to the table under control. He should be long, his spine should be long, and his thoracopelvic canister should be controlled throughout the entire pattern. Conclusion. So we included patterns that improved femoral acetabular or hip centration. We've included patterns that improved scapulothoracic or shoulder stabilization. And then we showed you a sideline pattern that integrated the function of the hip and shoulder. This has been Dr. Evan Oser. I hope this video has served you in your role in becoming the leader your clients need and want.